Okay, um, Prynhawn da Bawb, um, diolch yn fawr am ddod, uh, good afternoon, um, diolch i chi gyd am ddod i'r digwyddiad pwysig iawn yma, uh, Gito Harry di'n enw i, uh, my name's Gito Harry, I'm a Cardiff boy, though I actually grew up for a while just outside Cardiff, went to school in Tonner Efail, and then uh, Bryn Tav, and then Llan Harry, obviously named after my dad, Llan Harry. Um, I'm going to be presenting in, uh, in Welsh and in English today in recognition of the two, two languages of our great nation. Um, and uh, we have simultaneous translation if anyone uh, is interested, if anyone doesn't speak the language of heaven, uh, just pick up the headset, flick a switch, get the volume to work for you. And, uh, and if, if you put them down, just switch them off so they don't uh, interfere. Um, it's a real, real joy to be here to um, support Seren and to help celebrate the achievements to date and to encourage the next generations uh, to take advantage uh, of Seren. I managed to uh, crawl into, uh, out of a school in Llanhari to the Queen's College Oxford back in the day and I remember finding it pretty hard and pretty intimidating but it was one of the best things that ever happened to me um, and uh, I think the enabling young people in Wales to pursue their dream of going to the best universities uh, is hugely important. Some of my teachers at St. Harry were really helpful but the kind of network and the kind of nurturing and the mentoring that goes on with this uh, is, is, is wonderful because it is pretty scary and it's pretty hard to sort of aim that high. A couple of other things I've been asked to tell you, fire alarms, I mean I'd work it out, just follow the first person out the door, but basically um, there's no, no fire test plan, so if it goes off, um, there is a fire. Uh, and go and look at the um, Merchant Seafarers War Memorial. In fact, even if there isn't a fire alarm, when you've got a minute, go and look at the War Memorial anyway, because it's a great one. Mobile phones, uh, he says, switching his off sneakily. Uh, try, and, uh, try and make sure they don't ring during the presentation. I once worked for a man who... Uh, who looks set to be Prime Minister. Um, but back in the day, he answered his mobile phone on live television uh, on a show of, have I got news for you? But generally, it's a bad idea. Um, there is Wi-Fi here if you're interested. Please, all day, um, reference this event on social media. There are still people who probably don't know that it exists. They're oblivious to the advantages that it potentially offers them. Uh, some people who probably don't appreciate that this is one of the great initiatives by the Welsh Government that is genuinely aiming high, that is genuinely being hugely ambitious uh, and helping the next generation uh, to achieve all they can. Uh, everything's being filmed today. Um, there's a photographer, Mike, somewhere. Wherever he is, over there. Fantastic wave of Mike. Diochvar, um, Mike, we need your permission to use the photos. If you haven't filled in form, please do that. Um, and, uh, and thanks to all our sponsors beforehand. Their logos uh, are all over the place. So, just to kick off, I think it's fair to say that uh, this scheme is not only a reflection of the commitment of the Welsh Government, but one individual within it who I know is extremely passionate about this, feels very strongly about it, has committed uh, herself uh, to it throughout. I had the pleasure of interviewing uh, her recently on the best political show on television, Bidani Lear, and Kirsty was very feisty, I think, about uh, her hopes and aspirations and determination to help uh, school children in Wales. So please give a very warm welcome. Please roch groeso nawr i'r Gwynidog Addysg yng Nghymru, uh, Kirsty Williams. Diolch fawr iawn. Well, pranawn da pawb. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for being here today. Now, I don't know whether you agree, but I think all too often Wales, in here in Wales we can be a bit timid a bit shy about celebrating or shouting out about our successes. And make no mistake, Seren is an incredible success story. So if you don't mind, I want every single person here, the pupils, the teachers, the university partners, politicians, civil servants, and Seren supporters, to give a big round of applause and a massive thank you to everyone that's been involved in the journey so far. And before going further, I'd like to thank Gitto for the introduction and also for his invaluable support, not only across the events today, but for being a great friend to the Saren Network 
and what together we're trying to do and trying to achieve for young people in Wales from all different backgrounds. So today is about celebrating and showcasing the early success of the Southern Network as we continue to develop the programme to support our high achieving students to reach their academic potential. As many of you will know, Paul Murphy, Lord Murphy, led the research into the decline of Welsh students applying to Oxbridge, which then gave rise to the formation of the Seren Network. Now, unfortunately, Paul can't be with us today, but he sends his best wishes, and he remains a strong supporter of the programme. In fact, we've got supporters and people taking an interest all over the place. Just recently, Seren coordinators were up in Liverpool, giving the city leadership there uh, an insight into the secrets of our success. Now, I'm all for helping out our dear friends across the border, and it's good that we're being recognised for leading the way. But you know me, that just means that we need to go further to keep our nose out in front. So we're continuing to invest in Seren, extending its remit, and supporting our students with the aptitude, the potential, and the talent to succeed here at home, across the United Kingdom, and indeed, internationally. Therefore, I'm delighted to formally announce the extension of the Seren programme to support students in key stages three and four. This was a key recommendation from the initial report into the formation of the Seren network, with a clear rationale and need to start the Seren journey earlier. In doing so, the Seren Foundation programme will help raise ambition, aspiration, and will support students earlier during their GCSE and A-level choices. And this will help our students to make informed choices about university courses and their future careers. Currently in a pilot stage and using the established Seren Hub model as the vehicle, activities are being delivered across the hubs, supporting younger students through a broad range of activities. These include benefiting from newly formed partnerships with engineering companies, attending chemistry festivals, language residentials, and accessing mentoring opportunities. And universities from across Wales and the UK are also providing dedicated workshops in disciplines such as international politics, law, and maths. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the task and finish group of Seren Hub coordinators and link teachers chaired by Sean Farquharson from the EAS Seren Hub for supporting this extension of the policy from the ground up, which ensures that this programme addresses the needs of our highest achieving students. So during the next year, we'll establish best practice, form new partnerships with universities and support our younger students earlier on so that they can aim high and achieve their academic potential. For me, this is a core commitment in our national mission reform programme, to deliver a more able and talented strategy, raising aspiration right across the country. It's taken three years, and I'm sure for some of you it feels like a very long three years, to develop and strengthen the provision for our state school and FE college students in years 12 and 13. So we need to invest as much time to support our younger students through the extension of the program. But I am hugely encouraged by the partnerships which have already been formed through Seren between Welsh and UK and international universities. For instance, we've already seen Cardiff and Oxford collaborating to provide a modern and foreign language residential course for year nine Seren students. We've seen partnerships between Aberystwyth and Bath creating a massive open online course, or a MOOC, as they are known. These short courses prepare our students for their Welsh Back Advanced Skills Challenge Certificate, which we know provides Welsh students with a real advantage in developing the skills demanded by both universities and employers. But I believe that there is even more that we can do, working across the UK and internationally, to build partnerships which will be of benefit to universities and departments and students right here at home. There is funding available to support such partnerships through the Seren programme, and I am very keen to support innovative practice. 
So, it's great to see such a strong representation from Aberystwyth with you today, and I know that the world-leading International Politics Department is already engaging with Ferrin on these opportunities. So, I just want to underline that Ferrin is here to stretch and support not only the young people and students, but also to build bridges for our departments, our academics, right across our university sector. So, please take this opportunity to step up and to get more involved. Now, later on this evening, we'll be meeting with business partners and Oxford alumni, just like Gitto and Georgina, to start discussions about career ambitions and opportunities for our Seren students, and, crucially, to encourage them back to Wales to work after their studies are completed. We've already seen the significant impact of Seren in building confidence, ambition, and aspirations as the students are supported to reach their academic potential, be that in Wales, the rest of the UK, or indeed overseas. Just for a moment, take a look at the success of our partnership with Jesus College Oxford. They see the benefit of working with Wales' brightest students through offering an exclusive summer school, uh, which is enjoyed by so very many. And success breeds success. They have just announced a single donation by an anonymous donor to support Welsh outreach at the university of some £500,000. If you put your gift aid on top of that, that's a single investment of £625,000. Cambridge University has seen record offers for Seren students for the 2019 admissions and have recruited over 50 Seren ambassadors to come back to Wales to support and encourage the next generation some of whom I know are here with us in our programme today. For the first time this year, we'll see the Cambridge Teacher Roadshow travelling the length and breadth of Wales, supporting all of our link teachers to better understand the application processes involved. But I'd also like to formally extend our thanks to the leading departments of the Welsh and UK universities for providing ongoing support to Sarin both nationally through prep tests and outreach work, but also through their work with the local hubs. Whilst appreciating this, the founding principles of Seren have not changed, and we will continue to monitor the impact of the programme based on applications to and offers from both Oxford and Cambridge. And we continue to support our high achieving students to apply to leading universities here in Wales, the UK and overseas but also recognise that the students need to make informed choices about their future. One of the greatest joys for me over the last few years has been the pilot partnership that we have created with Yale. Their university's Yale Global Scholars Programme, initially last year, accepted 16 Seren Ster students for an opportunity of a lifetime. I was lucky enough to join them, and I could see at first hand the transformative effect of this opportunity. Now, due to the success of this pilot and the quality of the applicants from this year, 30 Seren students have been selected on merit to attend the Yale Young Global Scholars Programme, and 23 have been to selected to attend the pre-college programme at Harvard. More students from Wales now enrol at the Yale programme than from any other nation or region outside of the United States. Now, these young ambassadors for Wales not only enjoy a transformational life experience, but they use the opportunity to promote Wales and their own quality education to peers and academics from around the world during their time at these Ivy League institutions. Although I must say, I could have done without the tweet I saw recently from one participant who said that she was using the opportunity to teach her fellow students the Welsh language, but was also introducing them to Love Island. That's one cultural export I think we can do but without. But the students have gone on to gain undergraduate places at Yale, Harvard and Stanford, and maintain links with Wales through the Sarah Network. So building from this work, we have our new and our first ever US-Wales education partnerships with the Fulbright Commission and the Gilman International Scholarship Programme. 
ensuring that more US students will come to Wales, securing promotion of Wales as a steady destination across the United States and establishing new research relationships with our Welsh universities. I think it is a hugely exciting time to be involved in SERIN and we have to continue to support aspiration, ambition and high achievement from students of all backgrounds as we move forward into the next phase of the programme. It's time for us to be loud and proud about all that is good in Welsh education and send these young people out into our nation and out into the world to represent us. But we've got so much more work to do. I know that everyone here shares that commitment. So it leaves me to say one big thank you, the Archenwald, to everyone involved, the hub coordinators, the universities in Wales and beyond, the teachers, the parents, and most of all, the students. So thank you. The Archenwald, the Archengallan, Euch am Dani. Diolch fawr iawn i'r, i'r gwenido, dwi'n ofni bod gynna i ddau fa, bydd sydd yn indig saith ar y funud, a maen nhw yn uh, ffans mawr o Love Island. Mae'n anodd iawn cael nhw'n stopio gwylio fe. Uh, felly, wi wedi dechrau gweld chryd bach honno fe. Um, a mae'n just intimidating fel mae cyrff anhygol gyda bobl. Mae. Anyway, mae un o nhw'n uh, trio mynd i gargrawnt i wneud uh, Chinese, ond mae'r llall yn ddorol iawn yn mynd i abrystwyth, wrth os nesau edrych ar yr adran gwleidyddiaeth uh, rhyngwladol, a dwi mynd fyny yna ar y trên gyda fe, so dyna ni'n edrych ymlaen i fynd uh, lan i aber. Um, mae heddi yn achlysu'r i ddathlu'r hyn sydd wedi gyflawni, ac mae'n a phigurau wedi dod i fewn erbyn hyn. There's some evaluation of Seren to date that's provided some interesting data. We heard some of it from the uh, minister, but I've been given a couple of uh, stats here. One hub reported 91% of Seren students achieved a place in a Sutton Trust top 30 university. 79% achieved a place in a Russell Group university, with 45% staying in Wales to study, which of course can overlap with the Sutton and the uh, Russell Group. Um, student comments from the student survey in 2019 also encouraging. One said, the Seren Networks has helped me establish my goals, has driven me to push my limits to make a career in medicine possible. It's advised me and made me feel it's possible, for which I'm extremely grateful. And another one said, it made me believe that I was capable enough to apply for top universities and achieve top grades. Definitely helped my motivation to study and gave me more confidence. And as the minister said, I think confidence had their irrational than him. My bobble seed gadani heavy or bobble even come out. A choice would he give lawny lot. He gali dewe seed order point to ma. And to me on my bev seed angen an in oivind am a camnesa ir had der na. Ar hyder yma ysgolion preifat yn sicr yn, yn ddysgu blant, felly mewn bwysig iawn bod seren yn rhoi dyr un hyder ar, ar sens yna o'i chelgau sydd yn nhw. Um, a mae'n ffantastig i glywed os ych chi'n ystyried seren fel academy. If you regard seren as a sort of virtual academy, then the hit rate with Cambridge, which if you've forgiven an Oxford man, is the second best university in the world, but the hit rate with Cambridge uh, for the seren network, if you see it as virtual network, is like that of Eton. And considering Eton charges 40,000 a year and Seren doesn't, um, that's a pretty good return on investment uh, for the uh, Welsh Government, I'd say. So there's a lot to celebrate today, and we'll give you a bit of a taste of that with this video. Diolch mawr. The Seren Foundation allows younger students between years 8 and 11 to undertake activities that will help them make the right choices and prepare to go to leading universities. Today I've brought 10 schools to the Royal Welsh College. There are students who want to be scientists, students who want to study history. What we're trying to do is develop the aspiration, the skills of younger students so that they can aspire to go to Oxford or go to Cardiff University in the future. I wedi bod yn dysgu sgiliau newydd a berfyfyrio a mae bod yn rhoi iawn. Mae dyddiau flaen yn gallu newid bywyd y pobl yn dyfodol a na phan fi'n gwybod wedi bod yn effeithiol iawn a ddim eistedd yn yr, um, yr um, stafell dysgu. 
It's so important that our young people of Wales can actually start thinking about their pathways. They've been hearing from the horse's mouth what it's like to study in college such as Oxford or Cambridge, possibly Bath or Cardiff. Uh, and hopefully it'll just whet the appetite. It'll make them think, oh, actually, perhaps I could do that. That is something I could aspire to. It's been a, a fantastic opportunity for younger students to start to think about university a little bit earlier. And so when you can start thinking about university in year 9 and year 10 and just planting that seed of actually having an aspiration and having an ambition to go to a top university in this country, that can only be a good thing. Ken, uh, hey there, Rodney really fixated on Mindy, Oxford or Cambridge, Havid. Uh, on my hen, would you just write Timid back on IV with the he denied my galad or mine carith hana with them really helpful yawn um the devote all you a bit fish grenade. It gives you sort of the applications that you need to get into uni, so it gives you the support and I think people don't realise that even what you do in your ten can influence where you end up. Heavy bydd un ar ddeg o ysgolion uh, o Draws Cymru yn dod y mae Rhyd Ychen ar gyfer diwrnod um, ieithoedd modern. Uh, ysgol Bresol yw felly bydd nhw'n aros mae dros y nos. Felly bydd yna deuddydd o weithgareddau, felly bydd cyfle i'r disgyblion i ymestu neu sgiliau ieithyddol ymhellach gobeithio. They will see how languages can broaden their horizons. They'll see how languages can make them more employable in the future and also they'll get a chance to look around a prestigious university and to see um, how a university like this is open to all. What they're doing um, over the next 24 hours is a series of workshops and activities that are really designed to get them thinking creatively about languages. I'm hoping to learn that, uh, like how languages are important and like why to take them and what, like, what benefit could come out of them in the future. I'm going to have a voice with you. I'm going we want these bright young people to achieve their potential um, and to get to the best universities. We're just trying to make sure that we're giving opportunities to that wider group of young people and catching them early and getting them to, you know, really aspire to great things in the future. Year nine might seem young, but in fact, a lot of them just need to see what's, what's available. And that sort of motivation, I think, makes more difference than anything else. Dwi'n credu bod gweithgareddau seren ar gyfer ysgyfrion uh, ifancach yn bwysig iawn am i fod yn plannu hedyn o beth sy'n bosib falle uh, nes ymlaen. Mae yn codi dyheiadau falle ar gyfer mynd i'r brifysgol, peth rhywbeth falle nad oedden nhw'n meddwl yn bosib cyn hynny. No matter where you're from, where you're from, a small town or anything, you can make your dream a reality. I think the, the younger that you can start to work with students and to plant that seed of ambition in somebody's head early on um, can only be a good thing. I firmly believe that it's going to change lives. I've already seen it change lives and if we're targeting younger students we get the opportunity to change more lives. Well, I'm great to welcome you to the Blast in the Air, Bima Seren and Ined. I have it in the Daddle Dross, Dechre and Gint. I think it was Aristotle who said, Give me a child until he's seven and I'll show you the man. You can substitute adult for that. It used to be a quote from a pope, I think, but maybe it didn't, didn't work as well. Anyway, we're going to hear from some people who've now experienced Seren at a younger stage. Catherine Hodder, year nine student uh, and a school bro Edern. Ellie Rees, uh, see them really need a tree, a student at Gower College. Adioch Narbenigi Moriad Egilib, uh, who's standing in at very, very short notice, literally about five minutes ago, uh, from Fitzalan High. I once went to a wedding, actually, and the best man said, feels like yesterday when my brother asked me to be his best man. In fact, it was yesterday when somebody else uh, missed his flight. But uh, thanks very much to Muad for stepping in. But uh, please give a very warm welcome to Catherine, Ellie and Murad. Diochwaad.
Crin hawn da, fe enw i yw Catrin on Hoda, a dwi'n disgybl blwydd unaw yn ysgol gyfyn Gymraeg Bro Edern. Rwyf yma y prim hawm yma i ddweud ychydig wrth chi am fy mhrofiad gyda sefydliad seren y gynharach eleni. Rwyf yn un ffodus iawn i gael fy newis gan fy mhennaeth blwyddyn, i fynychu canolfan awyr agored storioms am dri diwrnod i gymryd rhan yn y rhaglen gyffrois a hariol hon. Rwyf ti a 25 o fyfyrwyr o wahanol ysgolion ledled caerdydd yn cymryd rhan ar y cwrs adeiladu cymeriad hwn. Yr unig barson rwyf yn un ei adnabod oedd bachgen arall o fy mlwyddyn. Wrth gwrs, caws o'n ni ein rhoi mewn dim a gwahanol, ac felly roedd cymdeithasu, rhyngweithio a bondio yn hanfodol. Yn storioms, wneith ni gymryd rhan mewn nifer o weithgareddau hwyl, er enghraifft, dringo, abseilio, datrys problemau ac adeiladu raft. Cafo ni ein dysgu sut i glymu harnesau dringo ac abseilio, a wedyn, bi o'n yn yn ymarfer ysgeiliau a techneg technegau newydd hynny ar fyfyrwyr eraill i wella arweiniaeth a chyrrifol debaith. Roedd gweithgareddau nos yn cynnwys mynd am dro neu gwblhau cwrs rhwystrau mewn tywyllwch llwyr, fel digwyddiad hwylog i roi ddiwedd ar diwrnod dwys o rando, ymateb, dysgu a gwella. Caws y mewn rhoi mewn grwpiau i ddod â nodwedd gystadleol i'r tasgau, ac wrth gwrs, sicrhau brwd ffyrdedd. Ar ddiwedd y tri diwrnod, byddai'r tîm a oedd wedi ennill y rhan fwyaf o'r gweithgoreddau yn seiliadig ar amser neu ansawdd yn ennill. Yn ffodus, roedd yn un aelod o'r tîm byddigol. Caws o mewn rhoi mewn sefyll feoedd a aethon ni y tu allan i'n parthau cysur, a gwneithon ni asesau cryfderau a gwendidau yn gilydd. Rwy'n hynod o ddiolchgar o gael y cyfle hwn. Mae wedi fi'n achiogi i adeiladu fi'n fi hymeriad drwy rhyngweithio a myfyrwyr eraill, sy'n naw ffrindiau. A mae hefyd wedi fi helpu i ddatblygu fy sgiliau gwaith tîm ac arwynyddiaeth yn y gystal a fy hynna'n hyder. Mae hefyd wedi fi'n haratoi ar gyfer fy dyfodol. Roedd y gweithgareddau yn bleser, bleseris iawn ac rhwy'n ddiolchgar i'r sefydliad seren am drefnu'r digwyddiad hon a rhwy'r cyfle i mi ac rhwy'n edrych ymlaen at barhau i fod yn rhan o'r prosiect. Rhwy'n siŵr y bydd y rhaglen yma o fydd i pawb sy'n cymryd rhan yn y dyfodol, cyn belled y bod nhw'n wirioneddol ymrwymo i'r profiad. Diolch am eich gwrandawiad. Good afternoon, everyone. So I've been involved with the CERN network since the start of year 12, and I'm really thankful to be a part of it. Uh, my ambition is to study medicine at a leading university, and the CERN network has really helped students like me to, to fulfill our ambitions by providing us uh, with many opportun uh, opportunities, such as UCAS preparation events. Um, I actually attended Jonathan Padley's uh, recent event, uh, which focused on preparation for Ox Oxbridge applications. These events are incredibly useful, as not every student is lucky enough to receive first-hand advice from admission uh, officers at the most prestigious universities. Uh, I think in introducing Seren-style activities to pupils at a younger age is a great idea, as students can take part um, in activities earlier on and meet others with sim similar ambitions and goals. Uh, this will get students to think about their future plans earlier on, uh, which I personally believe is important so that students know, uh, um, are aware of the goals they are trying to work towards. Um, I've also applied to the Jesus uh, College Seren Summer School, uh, provided by the Seren Network, uh, and I think that spending a week uh, immersed within this environment will hopefully confirm my decision one way or, an or, or another. Um, and I'm hoping to hear whether I've been successful this Friday, so fingers crossed. Um, I'm looking forward to continue to be a part of um, the Sarah Network in the foreseeable future. Thank you very much for listening.
Hi, um, I'm Ellie Rees, I'm from Thnerthly, and I'm reaching the end of my time with Suren, unfortunately, just on my A-levels, but I was, happened to be on the first cohort to go to Yale last year, where I did International Affairs and Security, and thanks to Siren, uh, not only did I get an offer from Cambridge, but I'm also instead going to study in America um, to do um, liberal arts in Washington, but also in Santa Fe, New Mexico, so there's two states, so quite nice. But I think we can all see that the statistics of Siren are amazing. But I think the most important thing about Siren is that it makes you realise as a student you're more than just a statistic. You're more than that A or AS level or that A star, A level. You're more than just oh, another Welsh student to go to this college or this. You're you, your hobbies, your interests, the opportunities Siren gives you. Prove to yourself that you're more than what you thought you are. You're more than your grade that you've, I'm sure, with all students across the UK, you do sometimes feel like your grade is your worth. I think everybody's gone through that, no matter what age you are. But it shows you that you're more than that. And in a way, it's very maternal. It's almost like that little like mother hen trying to like keep you safe, but also show you that the world is out there and that you need to go. You've got that support network behind you, so you're unafraid to try. But it also makes you try. And it is amazing. It's made me more tenacious. It's made me go out there. And I couldn't be more thankful. I mean, in Yale, everybody was amazed because, I mean, we had Kirsty come in and sit with me in my little seminar. There was only 12 of us around a table. They all looked at me like, sorry, but minister coming here? Minister of Education, they can't come here. And I was like, yeah, it's only, it's only Kirsty. Hi. It's like, hi. And then, and they were amazed because it is its own little community. And I think that's what everybody should be proud about here, and the fact that everybody should want their students to go to that because they don't feel alone. And I'm sure every other place in the UK would be jealous of the opportunities we get. I mean, Yale was something unheard of in my family. I mean, I thought I was going to stay in Wales forever. I wasn't even going to apply to university. And then I ended up not only going to Yale, seeing Yale, spending time in Cambridge, applying to Cambridge and applying to the US, but I'm also leaving to go across an ocean for four years. And who knows what will happen, but that's majorly down to CRN because they show all their students that they are capable individuals and even though they make them even more intellectual by giving these opportunities, pushing their boundaries, they're not just stuck in this framework of, oh, I'll do Welsh today, my Welsh exam's then, or my English exam is then. They push you to realise that actually learning is kind of fun, as geeky as that sounds, it is. And, um, they, but they also teach their students to be more empathetic and better people. I've gone out, I've got friends in Venezuela, Pakistan. I mean, I'm meeting up with my friend who's going to Pakistan, he's going to the same college as me, and hopefully we're going to be roommates, I find out next week. So. But um, yeah, they teach me to be a better person. I'm not afraid of boundaries or the world anymore, and I couldn't be happier to be part of CRN, so thank you. Diolch fawr iawn i'r tri o'n o'ch chi, oedd yna'n gwbl ysbrydoledig. Um, thank you about Donald Trump yn gwybod beth sy'n mynd i fwrw fe. Um, but hopefully he won't manage to build a wall between the two campuses you're, uh, you're going to be studying at. Um, Now, diolch fawr i'r tri o'n o'ch chi. Ni nawr yn mynd i glywed gan uh, dri arall, tri arbennig iawn. Uh, Mike Nicholson is the Director of Undergraduate Admissions uh, and Outreach at the University of Bath. Bath. Uh, having previously worked as a director of undergraduate uh, admissions and outreach at the best university in the world, which you all know is, uh, is Oxford. Um, secondly, he's a young man that I had the privilege of interviewing. Um, saw him for a drink recently, but uh, interviewing for Abid and Ilea, the best political show uh, on any, any TV globally. Uh, Lucas Watts uh, was in the original Seren cohort. He attended the first Seren summer school at Jesus Oxford in 2017, studied at Gartholog which is not a million miles from the school that I used to know as Fried Velen, and now studying the best course, uh, though largely discredited by members of the current cabinet, uh, politics, philosophy and economics at Wadham College, Oxford, where he's just finished his first year. And then we also have Nia Griffiths, who's a second year undergraduate at uh, the second best university in the world, Cambridge, studying Anglo-Saxon, Norse and Celtic. Um, she learned Welsh, Chwarateg, uh, Trana Studio, Ag y nawr yn dangos lot o ddiddordau mewn polisi dwyieithog uh, yng Nghymru, uh, sydd yn dipyn o beth. Mae hi'n dod o uh, y Gawr College yn Abertawe a uh, Pontarddilais Comprehensive. Uh, she's a Seren Ambassador and takes part in access work for a subject, college and university. So please welcome these three stars to the stage, and stars, of course, is what Seren means. Diolch fawr iawn. Um, 
I think I can say I'm truly honoured to probably be the only English person here today. Um, and uh, I also remember a very difficult conversation with Paul Murphy when I was uh, in my previous role, where he basically sat me down and said Oxford wasn't doing good enough um, and we had to do better. And from that conversation, uh, we have, I think, probably what we have today. I don't want to spend a lot of time talking because actually student reviews are much, much more interesting than those of um, people like me. However, I would want to stress three things about the Seren network that often we don't think about. Firstly, it has changed how universities engage. Um, it is rare to see a program of activity which is national. Uh, all too often things tend to be diluted uh, or operate on a very small scale. So to have a national program to allow us uh, to effectively engage with students across Wales and with teachers and with government uh, is a real joy. And I am delighted uh, that this is going to be extended to students at a younger age, because as we know, the earlier that students are engaged with these sort of issues, the more likely it is they make informed and knowledgeable decisions. Uh, secondly, um, I think it is a programme that has challenged a lot of people um, in a very, very positive way. We heard from the previous speakers about the challenges that they've faced uh, in doing the programme. I think for people who work in the university sector, it has been a challenging programme to engage with, but challenging in a good way. It's made us, again, think about how we engage. It's made many of us uh, look at how our programmes of outreach are uh, delivered, and also how we can achieve a lot more through collaboration with colleagues. So again, if we use um, the example at Bath, where we've got about 500 students uh, currently on residentials, a significant number coming from Wales, because it is very easy for us to gauge through the hubs and find very talented, very able students, rather than having to disaggregate our activity across a very small number of, of heads of six, or as we, as we had to do previously. Um, the final thing that I uh, particularly uh, recommend about the CERN programme is it's been consultative. Um, it hasn't been a top-down programme where everything's been imposed. It grew from the hubs. Uh, we've developed best practice over time. And I think what we now have is a really, really strong programme where the best practices from across uh, the, the, the nation have been identified and embedded uh, within the programme. Um, we've had some brilliant collaborations that just would never have happened had this uh, programme not existed. Uh, we've already heard about the joint uh, massive online open course that we do with, between Bath and Aberystwyth University. Um, we've now had 1,600 students do the English uh, language version of the course. Uh, we've had 68 students doing the Welsh language version of the course, and it was the first ever Welsh language MOOC uh, that we saw, um, and we're very, very keen to try and grow those numbers over the next few years. We've also, of course, seen some brilliant collaborations uh, through organisations like the Brilliant Club, and I think that link between government, educational charities, higher education, the school sector, and students is a really, really powerful combination, which I haven't yet seen replicated anywhere else. So thank you for everything that Seren has provided to the higher education sector. Um, hello, um, as Geta said, I'm Lucas Watts, and I've just finished my first year at Wadham College studying PP. I'm from Church Village uh, near Pontypridd, and went to a school given Gartholog, which is the best Welsh school in RCT, <laughs> St. Harry being the second. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, sounds just quite good, I suppose, um, is the message today. And um, I, I've been on a wealth of events. Um, the Summer School of Jesus just like completely changed my perception of Oxford and just really solidified um, my wanting to apply. Um, as well, allow me to finally decide my course, which was quite a weird um, path, I think. Um, the other events I went on, I went, I shadowed a law student at Cambridge and went on um, the Ledlet course in London, where I spent a week at work experience uh, at Gray's Inn, the Old Bailey, and a barrister and a solicitor as well, both of which made me really sure that I really didn't want to do law. Um, and that was more helpful than anything, because had I been doing law now, I would not be very happy. Um, yeah, and I think also, like, really importantly, it's just left me with quite a lot of friends, um, which when you go into somewhere like Oxbridge, um, and no one, um, no one from my school applied to Oxford, um, 
And so you kind of arrive there with a bit of a network already, although it, it was a network of three people, it was still a network. Um, whereas my friends now, who went to kind of the London private schools, all turned up with like 25 friends. Um, and that's just like quite an underrated um, an important aspect of the program. Um, and yeah, I think it's just quite important in terms of leveling the playing field, because that kind of insider information that we got from Sarah and, um, you know, the kind of private schools and the elite grammar schools of England all get already. And um, without that, um, we're kind of competing with people who, from very early on in their lives, have had the path to elite institutions kind of laid out for them. Um, and that's why it's really important as well. We've got this expansion now to um, year 8 to 10 as well, because we then replicate this idea that quite early on we've planted the seed um, and people can aspire to these you know, elite institutions which are just brilliant places to be. They're so exciting, so fascinating. You get so many opportunities and meet so many cool people. And um, without Saren, I just wouldn't have experienced that. And um, particularly the way um, like Matt, um, Stephen Parry Jones, who operated our hub, and Jonathan Padley's work, um, they were all just really helpful, especially with, um, working with our schools um, just to make sure that... Um, we got all the support we needed, and yeah, it's been great, and also just quite fun. So um, yeah, I think that's all I'm going to say. Thanks. Hi, um, I'm Nia, and I'm just going into my third year at the University of Cambridge now. Um, I'm from Pentagare in Swansea. Uh, yeah, uh, it was during my A-levels that Sarum was fully established and moved forward from the more general HE plus programs that were in place. Uh, when I started my A-levels, I had absolutely no idea where I wanted to apply for university or what I wanted to do, let alone any idea that I could get into Oxbridge. Um, I'm a first-generation university student who went to Pontedilize Comprehensive School. Uh, my parents had no information or guidance to offer me about anything beyond GCSE, uh, and though supportive, they had no ambitions for me. They said, you can be a hairdresser and we'll still love you, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> but uh, moreover, though my comprehensive school had tried to encourage its more able and talented students, we never received any kind of formal talk on university or A-level choices. So when I came to choosing my A-levels, I kind of initially made the wrong decision before uh, Sarah and ambassadors helped me to switch over, or those who would later become part of Saren. Um, yeah, so on coming to Gower College, there was a whole lot of work for the staff there to do, turning me from somebody who had no idea of what I wanted to do in the future to a strong and competitive Oxbridge candidate. Uh, trips to the open days at bo both Oxford and Cambridge absolutely blew me away. Uh, I'd never actually been to England at that point, so <laughs> wild time. Um, <laughs> but they really gave me something solid and tangible to aim for. Uh, talks by Jonathan Padley uh, especially helped me make more informed decisions about my A-levels, helped me make that switch over. Uh, and from students younger than myself, I constantly hear about the confidence and the experience that summer schools in America and Oxford have given them in starting their application and elsewhere. The support I was given in my application and during the interview process, I cannot praise enough. And the skills that I was given through Sarin not only helped me perform well at interview, but then it, later when I was applying for internships, etc., at Cambridge, that was my like base knowledge set that I went forward with. So that was really useful. Um, and from Ponte de Lais Comprehensive, Three pupils from my year cohort went to Oxbridge, which is something of a record. Um, <laughs> but before starting our A-levels, none of us knew that we would end up where we ended up. So this speaks volumes about the importance of Saren in further education, in encouraging the brightest students who otherwise might never apply at all. But it also underlines why the rollout of Saren to younger students is so vitally needed had someone, when I was in comprehensive school, come in to talk about university in the way that we have done yesterday with uh, year eight to 10 students, I'm just wondering how many more people from my comprehensive would have made applications. Um, yeah, what else am I saying? Uh, <laughs> uh, so rolling out Saren to younger students not only ensures that they are making informed decisions about A-levels, but it does just plant those seeds in their mind earlier on that Oxbridge is maybe an option or maybe something they can apply to. Um, more recently, as an access officer, 
often uh, I went to one of the UCAS open fairs and a lot of students when walking past the Cambridge stand would kind of like poke each other and point and like giggle and while that's quite sweet and endearing it also suggests that in their minds Oxbridge is something that they would never dream of so um, just putting it forward at an earlier stage stops that stigma, it normalizes it in their minds, and suddenly it doesn't become this wild cartoon stand that's over there that you can't achieve, but it becomes something that's real. Um, finally, I think that over the last two days, my support for this branch of Saren has increased massively by watching members of the project organize it who have overwhelmed me with their confidence and passion and drive. So I'd like to thank them as well. So. Thank you. Diolch fawr iawn i'r tri hon i'n wap awr sy'n siarad o'r blaen. I think as Woody Allen said, 90% of life is turning up. So um, you've done pretty well today uh, and the people who are watching us uh, in the other building as well, Shumai. Um, you got the grades, you made the grades. Chi di cael y marciau wedi gwneud eich marc yn barod neu fyddech chi ddim yma. And the key now, I think, as the minister said, is a sense of ambition, a sense of self-belief, and a sense of confidence. Hinan hader, hinan gred, agichel geis os Because applying to one of the top universities, I still remember now, and I'm I'm going to be 53 on Monday. I'm getting used to the idea. Um, it's pretty in intimidating. I still remember now sitting down in in what was a freight tier in a school San Harry, um, in Eder ar Holiad. And I even remember the essay titles, but even more than the essay titles, one was on opinion polls, funny enough, uh, one was on the Protestant Revolution, but I still remember a passage from J.S. Mill, and I read the first line once, twice, three, four, five times, and it didn't make any sense at all. I thought, well, that didn't take long. I was about to walk out and thought, just read it one more time. And as I read it about the sixth or seventh time, the kind of penny dropped, it kind of made sense, and the rest of it sort of fell into place. Um, but it was scary. Um, and then I rock up for an interview and I'm walking down the high street in Oxford and I ask, can you tell me which is Queen's College? And they didn't say it's over there on the left. They said, it's the neoclassical building with the cupola. Just some random person in the street. And I thought, wow, wow. Do you think I'll be speaking like that one day? Um, I still remember a weird interview, particularly from the philosophy woman. I think the, the history and the economics and politics was fine. But then the philosophy woman saying, what if I was to tell you that this matchbox was circular. I just thought my dad was a psychiatrist. I grew up on the campus of a mental hospital in Hensel, for those of you who are old enough to remember. And I thought, I'd just tell you that you're mad. I thought, but that's probably not the answer she's looking for. But I kind of got it. It's to do with primary and secondary qualities, as Lucas could explain a lot better than me. Um, I still remember the first economic seminar where we did those as a group. And I'd studied everything through the medium in Welsh. I needed an economic in Gymraeg, Vel Popadharas and Llanhari. I went into near Gromlen yma, ag and aid, right, who can tell me what this is? And nobody else could answer, and I could, but I just didn't know the terminology. So I said, just tell us in Welsh. I said, dev, lle had, am newid dev, finiol. And the whole class looked a bit sort of weirdly at me, and I sort of worked it out, law of diminishing marginal utility, which was the right answer. So hip, hip, hooray. Um, I still remember another intimidating tutorial that was very intense with a very, very bright general philosophy guy. And through the thin panelled walls, somebody the other side was running a bath. And this guy was getting more and more intense, but I was getting more and more distracted. And I could hear the bath being run, and then the tap stopping, and then somebody getting into the bath. All of this whew, over the head of the very intense, super bright sort of philosophy dawn. Uh, but I just lost all trail of thought whatsoever when I heard somebody start singing in the bath uh, next door. Um, but the real intimidation, I think, is encountering people who have been told all their life how clever they are. People who don't say, I play the piano, as, as we do, for instance, if we can, which I can't, but who say, I'm a pianist. It's a very, very subtle thing, but one is just, I can play the piano, and the other one says, I'm a pianist. It's just a way of projecting themselves that, for those who are not like that, is really quite overwhelming. And it took me a little while to get used to it, um, and to learn to sort of, I don't know, play them at their own games. So when they used to sort of say, which school did you go to? Instead of sort of saying, oh, school given Sanhari, well, I don't even understand what you said. I used to say, you'll have never heard of it. It's so exclusive. 
You know, it's not like one of these schools that, you know, every Tom, Dick and Harry can go to Eaton or Harrow, whatever else they're called. This one was San Harry, yeah, named after my dad. Yeah, San Harry, Church of Harry. You know, San Harry was not named after my dad, but, you know, it went down well. Um, you know, you wouldn't have the linguistic skills to go there. And you can see that just a little prick in their self-confidence starting to kick in. Um, I was in Oxford in the famous days of the Bullington Club, where they produced not only the last Prime Minister but one, but the man who looks likely to be uh, the next Prime Minister. And they're obviously qualified to run the country because at the Bullington they used to go out, get smashed, trash a restaurant and then write a cheque for the damage. Um, it was quite a strange thing to encounter that. But I ended up sort of, again, trying to say, your parents must have really hated you to send you to boarding school at the age of seven. Were you that bad a child? that you had to be sent away. Is that what posh people do? They, when they have unwanted pregnancies, they, they actually send the offspring off to boarding schools uh, so they're not hanging around. Obviously, it was all a bit of banter and there are good people and bad people and ugly people and pretty people uh, virtually everywhere. Um, but I think it's good training if you can handle that. It doesn't stop when you're 18, 19, 20, 21. As somebody who spent almost all his adult life uh, across the border and with a name like Gitta Harry, um, still encounter people who just can't pronounce four simple letters. They could say Azerbaijan or Nizhny Novgorod, but they somehow can't say Gitta. When I was posted to Rome, lucky me, uh, for the BBC, they would get it straight away. Oh, come guido, Gitta, come guido. Very, very easy, but they wouldn't. And a Radio 4 pronouncer, a Radio 4 announcer when I used to work uh, for the network of the BBC, one says, this new chap, how the, do you pronounce his name? And somebody said, well, why don't you ask him? He's standing behind you. And I said, Gitter, call me a git, and I don't know. Um, I said, can't I, call, can't I call you something else? Fantastic. I said, yes, of course you can, but let's rename Azerbaijan, because that, that's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? And let's anglicise Nizhny Novgorod, for instance. So... I think what Oxford helped with me was to give me the confidence not to be annoyed by that, not to carry a chip on my shoulder all my life, but to actually laugh it off, to sort of break through that barrier and make them feel sorry for themselves, not me feel sorry for myself. And the first time I presented what I still think is one of the best programmes on Radio 4, The World at One, um, there are lots of nice letters, but there's one letter to the editor saying how horrified this person was to turn on their radio the other day to hear this ghastly Welsh pleb preaching me to me on Radio 4. I do not know his name, but he has a one-dimensional voice and the brain of a retarded amoeba, an amoeba with special needs or learning difficulties. You know, I wasn't even credited with having the brain of an amoeba. Um, and I think that's the, you know, to say it out aloud, there's an assumption which has saddled some Welsh politicians that actually if you sound Welsh or if you are Welsh, that there's somehow some relationship between that and being thick. So again, there's no better sort of antidote, though it doesn't justify, you know, the attack in the first place, no better antidote than to just, you know, know inside, you don't even need to say it, that you've actually studied at one of the best universities in the world. So what Seren does really, really matters, because a lot of us will have seen the Sutton Trust facts the other day about the way the UK is still run by a privately educated elite. 65% of top judges, the people who decide whether to incarcerate us or to let us free, the people who decide how long we go to prison for, or how big the fine is, 65% of them went to schools attended by 7% of the population, 59% of the civil service privately educated, 39% of the cabinet. And look at the Tory leadership election at the moment. We've got the head boy from, you know, one really posh school against the school captain of, you know, probably the best known uh, state school. And, you know, it's only the one before last that was a member of the Bullingdon and a, an old Etonian himself. And the star of the show, we can't, we can't even create the sort of the imaginative character in the, in the uh, Tory leadership race, Rory Stewart. You know, everybody thinks, great, sounds like an outsider, makes a lot of sense. Old Etonian, hugely, um, hugely sort of privileged. You know, yes, he was a, an ambassador age 26 in, in Iraq. Good for him, he must have been terribly clever, but I have no idea how I would have even been on anyone's radar to be an ambassador anywhere at that stage. So again, even he, the, the guy some, some people thought was the hero of the hour, was sort of somehow an insider. Um, but there is a funny story when I worked for Boris, uh, which again wouldn't have happened if I hadn't gone from Tlahari to 
uh, to Oxford. When I worked for Boris Johnson, we went to Clarence House to see Prince Charles. I think about the third day in the job for Boris. And to his credit, he didn't have a security detail, didn't have a driver, we went on the tube. And we went down the escalator and there's a crowd of Chinese women who are so excited to see him that we got carried away by the crowd and we ended up on the Jubilee line heading east instead of west, which to cut a long story short meant by the time we got to Clarence House, we were late for the future king. And we walked in and I was in a bit of a stress about this. I don't get stressed very easily, but I thought rocking up late in one of the first duties that I had to escort him to meet the future king was not a really good start. And so when he says, Pida Bexom of any own. And I turned, and there was Manon Williams, known to uh, a lot, well, most of you now probably, um, as one of the stars of the uh, Knichliad, uh, among Hadith. Um, and I went to school with her. Because uh, Boris was baffled. Who's she? Who's she? So I was at school with her. And Boris says, I think it was a version of Crikey, I expect to see someone I've been to school with at a royal palace, but not somebody you've been to school with. Uh, but it's a sweet moment for Manon and me, I think. Uh, so the other thing to bear in mind is not only we can match them, but we can beat them. Because there's a little known story that when Boris was rehearsing to take the flag in the Beijing Olympics, when the Olympic family was passing on the responsibility from China to London to host the Olympics, um, we were there the day before rehearsing the ceremony and Boris' mind wandered, wasn't interested in the protocol and all that. He was just looking at the track, the 100-meter track, where Usain Bolt has set a new world record the day before. And he starts jabbing me and saying, hey, that's where, that's where Usain Bolt sort of, you can, you, can, you can imagine what happened. You know, what would a child want to do in a situation like that? You know, they would want to run the 100 meters in the Beijing, credit to him for that. And, after a while, when I tried to calm him down, wasn't working, off he goes. At which point, there's only one thing you can do if you've been brought up in South Wales in a rugby playing school, which is run after him. And I'm pleased to say that I beat him in the last 20 metres, and he still hasn't forgiven me. And I think it's very suspicious that the footage of that, the only footage that existed, has been destroyed, um, or I would be demanding its release. So, what I want all the people with us today a lot of them watching in the Earth Center on here, is to, is to just bear in mind that this is doable. Men, the chrin, men, rhywbeth eitha brawychus, men galed, dwi'n ddim yn hawdd mor odds yn edrych yn, yn ofnadw, ond men bosib i wneud hyn. A hefyd, dos na ddim, dos na ddim cwilydd yn methu, there is no shame in failure here. In fact, there's no such thing as failure. If you apply for one of the top universities in the world, you're going to get into one of the top universities in the world. It just won't necessarily be the number one. It'll be the number two. But you know, there's no shame at all in giving it all you've got and thinking that if you don't make it, as long as you've done yourself justice, it's because your face doesn't fit or you weren't quite right or you maybe got the wrong course or it happened to be a particularly strong cohort going for what you went for. There's no shame at all in trying and failing even when they can be very brutal in how they put you down. I remember one of my friends at Lanhari had applied for Jesus and got a four-word telegram, regretfully not required, Jesus. I don't think even the disciples 2,000 years ago or those that were left at the lake, you know, because they weren't one of the chosen 12, I don't think any of them even got a regretfully not required from Jesus himself. But uh, the college at that time was capable of being quite insensitive. Um, and if you do do it, it is a big boost. It does give you the confidence to go through life not wearing a chip on your shoulder, not to be too thin-skinned, to sort of look at some of the comedians and, uh, and commentators and the critics who, who knock whales and think, I'm not going to rise to that bait. I think we're too thin-skinned as a nation sometimes. And I think if you can match them and beat them in their own institutions at their own game, then you can, we can coexist very, very comfortably as well. And I think the combination of a top university with a state school is the best possible of the lot, because you can fly with the stars and stay grounded on Earth. I don't think anyone could be more socially versatile than somebody who's been to a state school in Wales and, and to one of these top institutions. So it's good for Wales, I think, to have confident, outward-looking, um, ambitious people 
all of that will work its way through. So the sowing the seeds idea that many people have talked about today is a very big one. So I'm going to end by just saying, I wish there had been a Seren when I was uh, at Llanhari all that time ago. So you're the more petair cyfle wedi bod yn Ivy, you're the more but a cyfle wedi gael i greu. Dwi'n croes awr ffaith bod Seren yn cael ei uh, hangi nawr, ac uh, dwi am nawr gyflwyno fideo sy'n yn atgoffan i gyd o lwyddiant Seren. Diolch fawr iawn i chi am heddi. I applied at the end of year 11 when I got my GCSE grades, um, me and maybe 15, 20 other students in my year. And then as part of a group, we've got to experience things like Oxbridge workshops, the Seren event in Mid Wales that was really amazing, um, you know, special talks and um, opportunities during the summer, things like that, that were really helpful to our uni decisions and prepping over the summer of year 12. Yn mis medi bydd yn deuddeg nes i glywed bod fi'n rhan o'r rhwydwaith Seren, ond ni'n gyffrois i fod yn rhan o'r rhwydwaith yma, achos bydd yn rhoi cyfle i fi i fynychu cynhadledd a dros bethau meistr i weld i gael mwy o syniad o ble hoffwn i fynd i'r brifysgol ac o bab bwnc ond eisiau ystudio. Hefyd ceisio'r cyfle i fynychu dau ysgol haf, un yn America ac un yng Ngholeg yr Iasiw i Dechen, ac oedd ein rhain yn brofiad de gwych yn mwyn cael syniad gwell o bab bwnc ond eisiau ystudio. On this journey, I've been out to Yale, I've been to other summer schools in Bath, um, and I've met so many great people. Uh, plus, I've explored academically, and I've decided that now I really want to study engineering. It's about kind of boosting through that confidence barrier and doing the things that you want to do, because most of the time, the reason that people don't go to these big universities and do the course they want is because they don't think they're good enough but really that's not the reason it's just they don't apply so Saren really helps you to apply to these things and then from there on you've got the skills that you've acquired and you're good enough to get into those universities. Oedd mynd i brifysgol haf Yale, oedd hwnna i ddyn nhw cyfleoedd goged yw melbwyr oedd gael, nid yn unig ddwy seren, oedd hwnna i cyfleoedd goged wedi gael erioed, achos oedd yn gyfle i ni fynd yno, ac i, um, nid yn unig i um, ddysgu hefo grŵp o bobl oedd mor um, uh, academi, yn academaidd mor um, llwyddiannus a lot o ni oedd yma yng Nghymru, oedd oedd hefyd yn gyfle i ni fynd yno, ac i gyfarfod hefo pobl o cyn gymaint o diwylliannau uh, gwahanol, Oh, it's so important to take advantage of every opportunity, honestly, even if you're unsure, even if you don't really want to go to America, if you've never been heard of like any of the unis or you want to like just do the summer school for, because you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. So I'd say go for it, because one decision here, just join in Siren, will just change the, the whole direction, the way your life's going. and. It'll make you realise that saying yes to things, it may seem scary, but it's totally worth it. Right, ni bron yna nawr, um, ond just cyn ni, ni ddod y pethau ben, mi eisiau gwahodd crew o fyfyrwyr uh, sydd yn mynd i'r unol daleithiau'r haf yma. Please uh, give a warm round of applause to uh, some of the kids who are going to the US uh, this year. Thanks to Sarah. Hands up in the audience, who's jealous? Who'd like to be there with them? 
And it does remind me of one, one final story for me. I was at Harvard Law School recently doing a presentation with a man called David Pickering that some of you will have heard of. And somebody was talking to us afterwards and he was being very patronizing. Don't know what he did, but he says, you know, I'm in a sort of sport nutrition and all that. David, do you know anything about that? Do you know, do you know anything about food and nutrition and all that? And I had to butt in and say, I think you'll find that David has captained his country at its most competitive sport and chaired the uh, dominant union in that field. He probably knows more about sport and nutrition than you are. So again, you know, don't be intimidated by those people out there who are playing that game. Uh, Melin means you're going to the States. Blue means you're doing other stuff, other good universities, including the best. Um, some in the States are very, very good as well. So, I'm going to say that 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 I'm going to If you're all ready to head off uh, to the Senate for a photo uh, before I think the Minister has got some sort of democratic sort of. Uh, Democratic responsibilities to do as well uh, as all this. Again, Paul Murphy, Lord Murphy's apologise, he can't be with us today. This minor issue called Brexit uh, is tying him up in the House of Lords. I was trying to get through without mentioning Brexit, but he wanted to explain why he wasn't here. But he's very passionate about this, wishes everyone well. So, Diolch Mari Aoni Bau, Mwnhewch Redditur Nod, a Diolch Amon Vivon Rhan Anna Vey Chigid. Diolch Mari Aoni Bau, a Diolch Mari Aoni Bau, a Diolch Mari Aoni Bau, a Diolch Mari Ao